Temperature is an objective comparative measure of hot or cold. It is measured by a thermometer, which may work through the bulk behavior of a thermometric material, detection of thermal radiation, or particle kinetic energy. Several scales and units exist for measuring temperature, the most common being Celsius, Fahrenheit, and, especially in science, Kelvin. The coldest theoretical temperature is absolute zero, at which the thermal motion in matter would be zero. However, an actual physical system or object can never attain a temperature of absolute zero. Absolute zero is denoted as 0K on the Kelvin scale, minus 273.15 degrees Celsius on the Celsius scale, and minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit on the Fahrenheit scale. For an ideal gas, temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the random microscopic motions of the constituent microscopic particles. Temperature is important in all fields of natural science, including physics, geology, chemistry, atmospheric sciences, medicine, and biology, as well as most aspects of daily life. Effects of temperature Many physical processes are affected by temperature, such as physical properties of materials including the phase, density, solubility, vapor, pressure, electrical conductivity rate and extent to which chemical reactions occur, the amount and properties of thermal radiation emitted from the surface of an object. Speed of sound is a function of the square root of the absolute temperature. Temperature scales Temperature scales differ in two ways. The point chosen is zero degrees, and the magnitudes of incremental units or degrees on the scale. The Celsius scale is used for common temperature measurements in most of the world. It is an empirical scale. It developed by a historical progress which led to its 0.0 degrees Celsius being defined by the freezing point of water, with additional degrees defined so that 100 degrees Celsius was the boiling point of water, both at sea level atmospheric pressure. Because of the 100 degree interval, it is called a centigrade scale. Since the standardization of the Kelvin in the international system of units, it has subsequently been redefined in terms of the equivalent fixing points on the Kelvin scale, and so that a temperature increment of 1 degree Celsius is the same as an increment of 1 Kelvin, though they differ by an additive offset of 273.15. The United States commonly uses the Fahrenheit scale, on which water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level atmospheric pressure. Many scientific measurements use the Kelvin temperature scale, named in honor of the Scottish physicist who first defined it. It is a thermodynamic or absolute temperature scale. Its 0.0K is defined to coincide with coldest physically possible temperature. Its degrees are defined through thermodynamics. The temperature of absolute zero occurs at 0K equals minus 273.15 degrees Celsius and the freezing point of water at sea level atmospheric pressure occurs at 273.15 K equals 0 degrees Celsius. The international system of units defines a scale and unit for the Kelvin or thermodynamic temperature by using the reliably reproducible temperature of the triple point of water as a second reference point. The triple point is a singular state with its own unique and invariant temperature and pressure, along with, for a fixed mass of water in a vessel of fixed volume, an autonomically and stably self-determining partition into three mutually contacting phases, vapor, liquid, and solid, dynamically depending only on the total internal energy of the mass of water. For historical reasons, the triple point temperature of water is fixed at 273.16 units of the measurement increment. Thermodynamic approach to temperature Temperature is one of the principal quantities in the study of thermodynamics. Kinds of temperature scale There is a variety of kinds of temperature scale. It may be convenient to classify them as empirically and theoretically based. 
Empirical temperature scales are historically older, while theoretically based scales arose in the middle of the 19th century. Empirically based scales Empirically based temperature scales rely directly on measurements of simple physical properties of materials. For example, the length of a column of mercury, confined in a glass-walled capillary tube, is dependent largely on temperature, and is the basis of the very useful mercury in glass thermometer. Such scales are valid only within convenient ranges of temperature. For example, above the boiling point of mercury, a mercury in glass thermometer is impracticable. Most materials expand with temperature increase, but some materials, such as water, contract with temperature increase over some specific range, and then they are hardly useful as thermometric materials. A material is of no use as a thermometer near one of its phase change temperatures, for example its boiling point. In spite of these restrictions, most generally used practical thermometers are of the empirically based kind. Especially, it was used for calorimetry, which contributed greatly to the discovery of thermodynamics. Nevertheless, empirical thermometry has serious drawbacks when judged as a basis for theoretical physics. Empirically based thermometers, beyond their base as simple direct measurements of ordinary physical properties of thermometric materials, can be recalibrated by use of theoretical physical reasoning, and this can extend their range of adequacy. Theoretically based scales Theoretically based temperature scales are based directly on theoretical arguments, especially those of thermodynamics, of kinetic theory, and of quantum mechanics. They rely on theoretical properties of idealized devices and materials. They are more or less comparable with practically feasible physical devices and materials. Theoretically based temperature scales are used to provide calibrating standards for practical empirically based thermometers. The accepted fundamental thermodynamic temperature scale is the Kelvin scale, based on an ideal cyclic process envisaged for a Carnot heat engine. An ideal material on which a temperature scale can be based is the ideal gas. The pressure exerted by a fixed volume and mass of an ideal gas is directly proportional to its temperature. Some natural gases show so nearly ideal properties over suitable temperature ranges that they can be used for thermometry. This was important during the development of thermodynamics, and is still of practical importance today. The ideal gas thermometer is, however, not theoretically perfect for thermodynamics. This is because the entropy of an ideal gas at its absolute zero of temperature is not a positive semi-definite quantity, which puts the gas in violation of the third law of thermodynamics. The physical reason is that the ideal gas law, exactly read, refers to the limit of infinitely high temperature and zero pressure. Measurement of the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation from an ideal three-dimensional black body can provide an accurate temperature measurement. Because the frequency of maximum spectral radiance of black body radiation is directly proportional to the temperature of the black body, this is known as Wien's displacement law, and has a theoretical explanation in Planck's law and the Bose-Einstein law. Measurement of the spectrum of noise power produced by an electrical resistor can also provide an accurate temperature measurement. The resistor has two terminals and is in effect a one-dimensional body. The Bose-Einstein law for this case indicates that the noise power is directly proportional to the temperature of the resistor and to the value of its resistance and to the noise bandwidth. In a given frequency band, the noise power has equal contributions from every frequency and is called Johnson noise. If the value of the resistance is known then the temperature can be found. If molecules, or atoms, or electrons, are emitted from a material and the velocities are measured, the spectrum of their velocities often nearly obeys a theoretical law called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, which gives a well-founded measurement of temperatures for which the law holds. There have not yet been successful experiments of this same kind that directly use the Fermi-Dirac distribution for thermometry. 
but perhaps that will be achieved in future. Absolute thermodynamic scale The Kelvin scale is called absolute for two reasons. One is Kelvin's, that its formal character is independent of the properties of particular materials. The other reason is that its zero is in a sense absolute, in that it indicates absence of microscopic classical motion of the constituent particles of matter, so that they have a limiting specific heat of zero for zero temperature, according to the third law of thermodynamics. Nevertheless, a Kelvin temperature has a definite numerical value that has been arbitrarily chosen by tradition. This numerical value also depends on the properties of water, which has a gas-liquid-solid triple point that can be reliably reproduced as a standard experimental phenomenon. The choice of this triple point is also arbitrary and by convention. The Kelvin scale is also called the thermodynamic scale. Definition of the Kelvin scale The thermodynamic definition of temperature is due to Kelvin. It is framed in terms of an idealized device called a Carnot engine, imagined to define a continuous cycle of states of its working body. The cycle is imagined to run so slowly that at each point of the cycle the working body is in a state of thermodynamic equilibrium. There are four limbs in such a Carnot cycle. The engine consists of four bodies. The main one is called the working body. Two of them are called each reservoirs, so large that their respective non-deformation variables are not changed by transfer of energy as heat through a wall permeable only to heat to the working body. The fourth body is able to exchange energy with the working body only through adiabatic work, it may be called the work reservoir. The substances and states of the two heat reservoirs should be chosen so that they are not in thermal equilibrium with one another. This means that they must be at different fixed temperatures, one, labeled here with the number one, hotter than the other, labeled here with the number two. This can be tested by connecting the heat reservoirs successively to an auxiliary empirical thermometric body that starts each time at a convenient fixed intermediate temperature. The thermometric body should be composed of a material that has a strictly monotonic relation between its chosen empirical thermometric variable in the amount of adiabatic isochoric work done on it. In order to settle the structure and sense of operation of the Carnot cycle, it is convenient to use such a material also for the working body, because most materials are of this kind. This is hardly a restriction of the generality of this definition. The Carnot cycle is considered to start from an initial condition of the working body that was reached by the completion of a reversible adiabatic compression. From there, the working body is initially connected by a wall permeable only to heat to the heat reservoir number one, so that during the first limb of the cycle it expands and does work on the work reservoir. The second limb of the cycle sees the working body expand adiabatically and reversibly, with no energy exchange as heat, but more energy being transferred as work to the work reservoir. The third limb of the cycle sees the working body connected through a wall permeable only to heat to the heat reservoir too. Contracting and accepting energy as work from the work reservoir, the cycle is closed by reversible adiabatic compression of the working body, with no energy transferred as heat, but energy being transferred to it as work from the work reservoir. With this setup, the four limbs of the reversible Carnot cycle are characterized by amounts of energy transferred as work from the working body to the work reservoir, and as heat from the heat reservoirs to the working body. The amounts of energy transferred as heat from the heat reservoirs are measured through the changes in the non-deformation variable of the working body. With reference to the previously known properties of that body, the amounts of work done on the work reservoir, and the first law of thermodynamics, the amounts of energy transferred as heat respectively from reservoir 1 and from reservoir the second of may then be denoted respectively Q1 and Q2. Then the absolute or thermodynamic temperatures, T1 and T2, of the reservoirs are defined so that to be such that Kelvin's original work postulating absolute temperature was published in 1848. 
It was based on the work of Carnot, before the formulation of the first law of thermodynamics. Kelvin wrote in his 1848 paper that his scale was absolute in the sense that it was defined independently of the properties of any particular kind of matter. His definitive publication, which sets out the definition just stated, was printed in 1853, a paper read in 1851. This definition rests on the physical assumption that there are readily available walls permeable only to heat. In his detailed definition of a wall permeable only to heat, Carathéodory includes several ideas. The non-deformation state variable of a closed system is represented as a real number. A state of thermal equilibrium between two closed systems connected by a wall permeable only to heat means that a certain mathematical relation holds between the state variables including the respective non-deformation variables of those two systems. Also, referring to thermal contact equilibrium, whenever each of the systems S1 and S2 is made to reach equilibrium with a third system S3 under identical conditions, the systems S1 and S2 are in mutual equilibrium. It may be viewed as a restatement of the principle stated by Maxwell in the words, all heat is of the same kind. This physical idea is also expressed by Balin as a possible version of the zeroth law of thermodynamics. All diathermal walls are equivalent, thus the present definition of thermodynamic temperature rests on the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Explicitly, this present definition of thermodynamic temperature also rests on the first law of thermodynamics for the determination of amounts of energy transferred as heat. Implicitly for this definition, the second law of thermodynamics provides information that establishes the virtuous character of the temperature so defined. It provides that any working substance that complies with the requirements stated in this definition will lead to the same ratio of thermodynamic temperatures, which in this sense is universal or absolute. The second law of thermodynamics also provides that the thermodynamic temperature defined in this way is positive, because this definition requires that the heat reservoirs not be in thermal equilibrium with one another, and the cycle can be imagined to operate only in one sense if network is to be supplied to the work reservoir. Numerical details are settled by making one of the heat reservoirs a cell at the triple point of water, which is defined to have an absolute temperature of 273.16 K. The zeroth law of thermodynamics allows this definition to be used to measure the absolute or thermodynamic temperature of an arbitrary body of interest by making the other heat reservoir have the same temperature as the body of interest. Temperature is an intensive variable in thermodynamic terms. Temperature is an intensive variable because it is equal to a differential coefficient of one extensive variable with respect to another. For a given body, it thus has the dimensions of a ratio of two extensive variables. In thermodynamics, two bodies are often considered as connected by contact with a common wall, which has some specific permeability properties. Such specific permeability can be referred to a specific intensive variable. An example is a diathermic wall that is permeable only to heat. The intensive variable for this case is temperature. When the two bodies have been in contact for a very long time and have settled to a permanent steady state, the relevant intensive variables are equal in the two bodies for a diathermal wall. This statement is sometimes called the zeroth law of thermodynamics. In particular, when the body is described by stating its internal energy U, an extensive variable, as a function of its entropy S, also an extensive variable, and other state variables V, N, with U equals U, then the temperature is equal to the partial derivative of the internal energy with respect to the entropy. Likewise, when the body is described by stating its entropy S as a function of its internal energy U, and other state variables V, N, with S equals S, then the reciprocal of the temperature is equal to the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to the internal energy. 
the above definition equation of the absolute temperature as due to Kelvin. It refers to systems closed to transfer of matter, and has special emphasis on directly experimental procedures. A presentation of thermodynamics by Gibbs starts at more abstract level and deals with systems open to the transfer of matter in this development. A thermodynamics the equations and above are actually alternative definitions of temperature. Temperature local when local thermodynamic equilibrium prevails real world bodies are often not in thermodynamic equilibrium and not homogeneous. For study by methods of classical irreversible thermodynamics, a body is usually spatially and temporally divided conceptually in two cells of small size. If classical thermodynamic equilibrium conditions for matter are fulfilled to good approximation in such a cell, then it is homogeneous and a temperature exists for it. If this is so for every cell of the body, then local thermodynamic equilibrium is said to prevail throughout the body. It makes good sense, for example, to say of the extensive variable U, or of the extensive variable S, that it has a density per unit volume, or a quantity per unit mass of the system. But it makes no sense to speak of density of temperature per unit volume or quantity of temperature per unit mass of the system. On the other hand, it makes no sense to speak of the internal energy at a point, while when local thermodynamic equilibrium prevails, it makes good sense to speak of the temperature at a point. Consequently, temperature can vary from point to point in a medium that is not in global thermodynamic equilibrium but in which there is local thermodynamic equilibrium. Thus, when local thermodynamic equilibrium prevails in a body, temperature can be regarded as a spatially varying local property in that body. And this is because temperature is an intensive variable.